Hey everyone, how are you doing? I want to make a video today talking about coming of age novels and what are considered some of the best coming of age novels ever written. And this is a subject I always really enjoy reading about uh, because, um, well, I think there's a couple of reasons why we like reading this genre and why there's so many books um, that are written as coming of age novels. Um, firstly, as a sort of practical reason, um, I think authors generally, um, this isn't always the case, but a lot of debut novels novels are sort of coming-of-age novels and are sort of based on autobiographical experience. I mean, that's a big generalization, but quite a lot of novels end up that way. And I just think because if, if a writer starts writing in their 20s or 30s, they'll inevitably be reflecting back on their teenage years and that sort of pivotal time when um, a lot was going on and changing in their life. And, uh, and so the second reason why I think we are really drawn to this sort of writing is because it is such a big time of change, that area from adolescence or teenage years into adulthood. I mean, that's some of the biggest changes in our life are happening when during around that time and you know we're sort of discovering who we are as people and and growing into adults and figuring out what we really want in life and and the type of adults we want to be and i was drawn to talking about this because just a couple days ago on the website lit hub uh there was an article published by emily temple uh, where she selected 50 of the the best uh, coming of age novels um in her opinion um that that exist and uh, and she gives explanations for um, those so I'll put a link to that below um, because it's really interesting her justification for picking all these novels and it's a good diverse range of books um, there's some classics and more contemporary books like one one novel that was only published a couple months ago and you know how I love a list and, and going through a list and picking out the ones that that I've read um, and talking about them uh, but then also picking the ones that that I'm really interested in reading and and I love how in lists like this there are several of these books which I'd never heard of and so I'm sort of eager to go and read and discover now and then there, of course there's a, a group that I've been wanting to get to um, so I'll, I'll be talking about all of those and uh, but just overall looking at the list out of the 50 books that she picked I've only read 20 of them so there's still quite a few for me to discover and enjoy um, so I'll put the, the list as I'm going talking about them up on the right so you can see it um, here in the video um, while I'm talking talking about it and going through them. Um, so for the first 10 novels that she's talking about, I'm so glad the very first novel she picks is We the Animals by Justin Torres. This is a novel that was published several years ago and is a very short, slim novel, but is incredibly beautiful, so meaningful, um, about a, a boy and his two brothers uh, um, who live with their, their father and this, um, this sort of atmosphere of hyper-masculinity and the sort of tumultuous relationship of, of their family and the, the narrator's development of his sexuality, of discovering that he has same-sex desire. And there was also a beautiful film made of this novel. Um, if you get to see the film as well, like I'm, I'm very, you know, precious about the, the uh, some of my favorite novels when they're made into to films. I'm, I'm very um, nervous about how that'll come across, but the film of this is absolutely gorgeous as well, so I'd really recommend. Um, then there's Andre Osman's Call Me By Your Name, uh, which is very well known and was, also has a beautiful film adaptation. And yeah, the, the novel is gorgeous. And I, I'd read it um, several years before the, the film came out. And uh, yeah, just such a beautiful coming of age film. So much about desire and the emergence of desire and and uh, and the the uh, the complications that that come with that that desire sort of unexpected desire but um but yeah just handles it in such a, a beautiful way and a sexy way it's a really sexy novel and i'm so excited i i have an advanced copy of the sequel to call me by your name um called find me which i haven't read yet which is crazy i haven't read it yet but i'm so eager to read this really excited about it uh, there's Jeffrey Eugenides' novel uh, Middlesex, which shamefully I've not read yet. Um, it's quite a chunky book, um, but I've not got to yet. And I, I just, yeah, I know I'll probably love this novel, but I just haven't got around to reading it. There's um, Black Swan Green, David Mitchell's um, probably his most autobiographical, most straightforwardly written novel. Uh, but um, surprisingly, it's not, it wasn't his debut novel, um, but is uh, excellent, excellent 
book. Um, I just loved. It's probably one of my favorite novels of his. Um, even though I really enjoy um, his fiction. I mean, obviously, Cloud Atlas is amazing. Um, and his more recent books, I haven't enjoyed as much. But um, but yeah, this is so well done. Uh, there's The Lover by um, Marguerite de Ross, um, which uh, I've shamefully not read, read um, especially because it's such a, a short novel. But, um, but yeah, I've been wanting to, to get to this as well. Um, there's Anne Carson's novel, The Autobiograph Autobiography of Red, um, which uh, my, my shirt is, is, uh, is oddly suited to that, but uh, I've never read it and don't really know much about it, so I'd be really curious to read it. Chili Jackson's novel, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, is a novel I've always wanted to read, I, and I've never read Shirley Jackson. I've, I've, she's one of these authors that I had this feeling that I'm just gonna love her writing, but for some reason or other, I've just never got around to reading her. It's ridiculous, I know. Uh, um, Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, um, this is great, but I read it as a teenager, so I feel like it's due for a reread. I, I didn't reread this, um, which I should have done when there was all the hoopla about the sequel finally coming out. Uh, Jeanette Winterson's Oranges Are the Only Fruit, I, I love this novel, and, and this is another example of, you know, a debut novel that is heavily autobiographical, and it really shows, um, and it's really interesting how, you know, her later books are very experimental and odd, and, you know, her most recent novel is just crazy mixture of sort of genres and styles and about subject matters and the, the way she handles language is so playful with the language. Um, but yeah, this oranges are not the only food, so much more straightforward, but really impactful coming of age story of her development and wrestling in a very religious household to come into her own uh, as a lesbian woman. <laughs> and then there is uh, J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye, and um, and it's funny how the, the author of this article admits in the, the article how this isn't really a favorite book of hers, and she's not even really sure if she likes it, but uh, but it would you know almost feel criminal to have a, a list of coming-of-age stories and not have this novel on the list because it's so famous and well known and beloved. Um, and I read it as a teenager and really enjoyed it, but you know, it was one of those novels which I don't know if I'd want to go back to. I don't know how I'd feel about it now. I think sort of the main character would probably just annoy me a lot now, uh, but, um, but who knows, maybe I should reread it. There's Colson Whitehead's novel Sag Harbor, and like I talked about in another video recently, uh, Colson Whitehead is a novelist that I'm, I'm so happy I, I started reading recently when, you know, his famous uh, Underground Railroad was published. I read it like a lot of other people and, and was just completely enthralled and fell in love with it. And I completely loved his most recent novel. So I've been wanting to go back and, and um, explore more of his back catalog. And so, yeah, this is another novel I'd really like to read by him. I've never read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, though I always feel like I should have. I've never read Infinite Jest. Um, and I don't feel a huge compulsion to. I'm not really hugely drawn to reading it. And I, I know uh, a lot of people who've read it um, found it quite disappointing and quite a drag to read, um, though other people completely love it and, and are obsessed with it. So I don't know, do you think I should read it? I'm not really sure. Uh, there's uh, James Baldwin's Go Tell It on the Mountain, um, which I read uh, in my early 20s, I think, and loved. Um, it's a really beautifully written novel, another novel that really struggles with um, somebody growing up in, in the church and then um, trying to find their own independence and voice and identity um, apart from that and uh, yeah, really struggling with religious experience. Bastard Out of Car Carolina is another novel that I feel like I always should have read, but I've not read. Um, Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar, um, this, I was obsessed with this novel when I was a teenager and um, yeah, it's an amazing story about um, mental illness and, uh, and a young woman trying to find her place in society and yeah, um, really powerful. I've never heard of The, the Last Illusion, um, sounds like a really fascinating novel so I'd really like to look into that one. And Jane Eyre, um, actually I really, I came to this quite late, I think I read it um, in my early 30s. And, um, and yeah, just fell in love with it and sort of wish I'd read it as a teenager because it's one of those novels, classic novels that I feel like I should have 
read as a teenager and then read as an adult because I feel like I would have had a very different experience of it as a teenager, but I'll never know because those years are gone now. So um, <laughs> there's Ocean Bond's uh, debut novel, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, uh, which is the novel which was only published a couple months ago. And shamefully, shamefully, I've still not read. Um, it's ridiculous because I've been really looking forward to this. So I just, I just haven't got around to it. Don't know why. Uh, there's The House on Mango Street, which I've heard of before, but, um, but never read. Um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's uh, Purple His Hibiscus. Um, yeah, brilliant, beautiful novel. And I have this lovely um, edition published by Fourth Estate, her UK publishers. Yeah, and I, I just adored this novel. And um, I mistakenly gave this novel to as a present to the mother of a friend of mine. And she, um, her, her reaction to it was very disappointing. Um, she, yeah, just didn't really like it very much. And, and, and I, felt, I felt really sad about that. So um, I don't know, I feel like I have to be careful about who you give certain books to, you know? Then I guess that's just part of the lottery of um, when you, you give novels that you really love to somebody and, you know, they don't always love it as much as you do. Charles Dickens' Great Expectations uh, is a novel that I sort of, I think I've read, I read as a teenager, but I, as part of like school, um, but I think I read it an abridged version of it. Um, and I sort of hate now, like thinking back in school in teenage years when you're given abridged versions of things rather than the full things. And uh, and I guess they figure, you know, students wouldn't actually read the full, full thing, but now I feel sort of cheated that that I only got part of the story. So I want to go back and read this. And, and, um, and I would say I want to go back and read more Dickens. Uh, then uh, I've never read um, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. It's another classic novel that I feel like I should have read when I was a teenager, but just didn't. Uh, Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man is a brilliant, beautiful novel. I read it, I think, quite in my early 20s, and, um, and yeah, I was really moved uh, by it. just the way he presents identity and the way our identities can be squashed by other people, the way uh, of that, that people sort of misinterpret who we are and then try to define who we are in a way which, you know, doesn't jibe with, with how we feel ourselves to be. Uh, I just think it's a brilliant novel. And Saul Bellow is another author who, um, that I read in my early 20s and, and loved and thought it was brilliant. I did read The Adventures of Augie March, but remember almost nothing about it. I think it's a series of adventures um, that doesn't have a strong through plot line, but is just a sort of coming of age type story in that way. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'd like to go back and reread him because I found him very moving. Um, then there's Zora Neale Hurston, Their Eyes Were Watching God. It's another novel that I don't remember much about, but I, so I'd like to reread this and I have this beautiful new um, vintage edition of, um, so I've published by Virago Books, not vintage, that has a uh, introduction by Zadie Smith on it. So, um, so yeah, I'd really like to go back and reread this at some point. Philip Roth, Portnoy's Complaint, um, is an author that I, I read a lot of his books when I was in my <laughs> early 20s again, um, but I don't feel a huge compulsion to go back and reread him. There's a couple of his novels that I thought were really powerful, but yeah, I don't feel a huge compulsion to go back and reread him. Uh, but an author I do really want to go back and reread is Toni Morrison, um, who unfortunately passed away recently. And uh, and Son of Solomon, I think, was one of my favorite novels of, of hers. I, I was just remember it being so incredibly moving and the the way um describes relationships and and desires and and uh, and and the the uh, the the dangerous way that we can become defined by our relationships um i remember that really sticking with me the way she wrote about that in son of solomon uh then uh, i've never read blood meridian by cormac mccarthy um it's an author i really need to read more by. I, I've, and I've not read Fran Ross's um, Oreo. I think this was republished a year or two ago, um, but I just didn't get around to, to reading it, but I'd really like to. Um, James Joyce's Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. I mean, yeah, I was really moved by this novel when I read it uh, many years ago. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a really powerful, beautiful novel. It's, you know, the accessible James Joyce. I mean, if, if you don't want to tackle Ulysses, um, this is a great novel to read, you know, alongside Dubliners, um, uh, the short stories. Um, the Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. This is a novel that I'd never really heard of before I, you know, started making these list type videos. And, and when um, there was a list last year of the 100 most important novels of the 21st century so far, um, this was sort of at the top of that list. And yeah, and I'd never really heard of it. And so, yeah, I'd really like to read this novel. I've 
heard so many great things about it since then, since I, since hearing about it. Um, then uh, another novelist, shamefully, I've never read any Ferrante, um, but um, but yeah, I've another one of those authors that I feel like you know I'm, I'll love once I get around to finally reading her um, and her whole series of books. That's you know much beloved. It's sort of like a cult classic now, you know, a modern cult classic that um, that so many people have read and loved. And there is Jasmine Ward's novel Sin, Unburied Sin, which I'm sort of surprised to see on this list because I think of it more as a family novel and uh, their sort of road trip and the struggles of this, that this family go through. And I have to admit, I didn't uh, connect with this novel as strongly as some other people did who read it when it first came out. Though I did really appreciate and enjoy parts of it. I think it's really beautifully written and the, the scenes I probably connected with most and, and thought were the strongest were the ones about the character of Jojo who is an adolescent boy sort of um, discovering his place in the world and has a lot of responsibility placed upon him and um, and it is really moving how she describes that, that process of him learning about his identity as a young black man in America and the onus that is placed upon him especially there's one really memorable scene when their car is pulled over and he's he's held at gunpoint by white police officers and uh, so yeah I think there are really powerful parts of this this novel um, and I would like to read more by Jasmine Ward um, then there is uh, The Cider House Rules by John Irving, which is a novel I've never read, um, which is really surprising because I've read a lot of other of uh, John Irving's novels and think he's a tremendous novelist. Um, and um, so, so, yeah, I would like to get around to reading that um, at some point. Um, there's a novel called Breaking the Ton, which I've never heard of, but sounds really fascinating. So um, I'd like to read that. Uh, there's Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. And like I said in um, I, another recent video, Video. Um, the only novels by Sarah Waters that I haven't read are her first two novels. So Tipping the Velvet and Affinity I haven't read yet, um, but I love her writing so much. So I need to go back and read these at, at some point. Um, Salman Rushdie's um, novel Midnight's Children I've, I've never read, um, sort of shamefully. It's one of those classic novels that I feel like I should have read. And Kazuo Ishiguro, I, I love his writing and some of his novels. His novel, The Unconsoled, I think is one of my favorite novels of all time. And a lot of people really love Never Let Me Go, but I just didn't connect with it so much. Um, I And I, I think it's a really interesting choice for this list because it's about, well, I don't want to give away what it's about, but um, but yeah, it's um, it, it handles the sort of coming of age question from a really interesting angle, I think. But uh, but yeah, I maybe I need to go back and reread it sometime. Um, then there's Zitty Smith's White Teeth, uh, which is a novel which holds a lot of personal meaning for me because it was published around the first time I first moved to London and was, you know, the big talk of the town when I first came to London. And, and I love this novel and um, it's, it's so amazing and such an incredible debut novel. But it's another novel that I think of as more about a number of characters rather than just a coming of age novel, um, though it does have a very strong coming of age um, storyline to it. Um, another novel of hers that I, I think is more apt for this list is probably her more recent novel Swing Time, which is uh, is much more of a, I think, coming of age story novel um, about two different girls and it mainly focuses on the perspective of, of one of those girls, but really interestingly shows how their paths diverge in life, how they're very strong friends in adolescence, but then as they become adults, they, they're really not friends anymore. Um, and it's really interesting how it shows that. Uh, then uh, there's Stephen King's It, which I, I've never read. And, and I read a few Stephen King novels when I was younger, but just not really that interested in reading them recently. I'd probably pick his novel Carrie over It. Um, but, but yeah, um, a lot of his novels deal with sort of coming of age. So those are all of the 50 novels on the list. And just quickly, I want to offer several other choices, which I think are really strong coming of age novels that, that I would put on a list like this as well. And, um, and in our article, she really welcomes um, people to, to give their own suggestions of their favorite coming of age novels. So in the comments below, if you want to let me know some of your favorite coming of age novels, I'd be really interested to know your suggestions. Um, so probably top of the list of, for me would be Edmund White's uh, Boy's Own Story, which, you know, I just think of one of the, the greatest coming of age stories of all time and, um, and had such 
profound personal meaning for for me when when I was growing up and I read it. Yeah, I'd highly highly recommend this novel. It's it's so much in it about the beauty of art, um, but also the emergence of its protagonist sexuality and uh, and yeah, I think it's it's amazing. But so many of his novels are are really beautiful and and uh, and wonderful. One of my favorite writers. Um, I'd also really recommend uh, Susanna Kaysen's. Uh, Girl Interrupted, even though this is actually a memoir, it's it's not published as a novel, but um, but just because it's it's so inspired by the bell jar because it's about her experiences going to the same mental institution that Sylvia Plath went to and her own experiences of um, emerging as a writer. And uh, so, yeah, I'd highly recommend that. Uh, and uh, there's The Lauras by Sarah Taylor, which is a beautiful, it's a road trip novel and it's as much about the mother as it is about the child, but really interestingly handles the, the perspective of a child who isn't sure what gender they want to be or if they even want to define their gender at any point. And it's really interesting how it handles that whole storyline of an adolescent struggling with this question of gender and, and not really feeling too bothered about it, but how the people around uh, this adolescent, you know, really aren't comfortable with with uh, not having this individual's gender defined, and you know how, uh, yeah, really reacts strongly to that, and um, really touchingly how the mother defends her child. Uh, then uh, there's the illumination of Ursula Flight, which, if you want an example of a historical novel which um, deals with a coming of age story, um, yeah, it's about a, a young woman who um, uh, comes from a very privileged background is, and then is forced into this marriage that she doesn't really want to be a part of, but she really wants to be a playwright. And it takes place in the 1600s, and it's just so beautifully written and is a really fun, um, um, I, I want to call it a romp, but that seems to like sounds like it would almost like diminish the the beautiful literary quality of this novel but it is it is really fun a novel um, as well as raising lots of interesting questions and uh, yeah and has a really beautiful cover as well uh, then I'd recommend a novel um, that's I haven't heard talked about very much called Evening Pimrose which uh, is a coming-of-age novel uh, that takes place in South Africa and is about a young woman who wants to work in the medical profession and has just finished um, medical college and then starts actually working in a hospital and learns about the the hard reality of that and the the issues of funding and um, privilege and and um, and yeah and and so I think it's it's really interesting as a coming-of-age story because it shows how you know when we're adolescents we have often are very idealistic and think we can go out and change the world but then when we're confronted with some of the hard realities of that you know it becomes a very different story. There's also the novel Edinburgh by Alexander Chi which doesn't take place in the city of Edinburgh it actually takes place in the state of Maine where, where I'm from um, and where also the author Alexander Chi is from and uh, and uh, and yeah this is just really beautifully poetic coming-of-age story told in a really unique way um, so if you want a coming-of-age story that's that's written from um, a very different angle I'd really highly recommend this another coming of age story which is told in a really unique way is the house of Smyrna by Tatiana Salem Levy and this is a novel um, about a South American um, who uh, has whose ancestry has Turkish roots and it's about um, uh, her mixed um, feelings of identity of national identity because I think that's another question that we can really wrestle with in these coming of age stories of of what is our national identity and um, and this handles it in a really interesting way um, there's a lot of um, strong imagery in it it's told much more in um, sort of imagery rather than a sort of plot line although there is an interesting plot line of going back to a, a house in Turkey um, that her ancestors came from and and uh, yeah so I think it's really beautifully told so those are some just some suggestions that I have of great coming-of-age stories but let me know if you have any favorite coming of age tales that you would recommend and if any of the novels on this list of 50 books are also some of your favorite coming of age novels or if you really disagree with them with some of these choices that this journalist made um yeah let me know in the comments below and we can have a good old chat about it but i'll speak to you again soon and hope you're doing well and reading good things bye everyone